22 is Ben Brierton Diaz. 27, the captain, Lewis Travis. And rounding off the rows 11 is 36, Adam Wharton. Garrett's been robbed. On the bench for Rovers is 13, Ainsley Burns. 10 times stolen. 15, Ainsley Burns. 21, John Buckley. 29, Jeff Bale. 30, Jake Garrett. 23, is Ash Phillips. Holding the scoring for Rovers, number nine, Sam Gallagher! Get in, Sam!
Ash Phillips to come on. Tomorrow is substitution in place. Thomas Kaminsky, that is the reason why you are Belgium's number one. Jesus Christ. Um, absolutely brilliant and a well-deserved man in the match performance. I was questioning um, at one point during the game whether I'd give it Galley or Kaminsky, but you know he pulled off another point-blank header save. Um, and just wow, just... Uh, you know, he, he just reminds you how good he is when he has performances like this. And, you know, even Sunderland at home, another brilliant performance, uh, a really good save there, um, pretty much on the goal line. And then obviously the Middlesbrough save is the best of the bunch, really. But today he made five phenomenal saves. And, you know, if that's Jason Steele in that, the game finishes 5-2 without doubt. Absolutely amazing keeper. And... um yeah, to be honest, we rode our luck today. Um, two one flattered us. I don't think anyone can deny that. Um, we probably should have lost, but you know, some individual brilliance from Kaminsky means we see the game out, get the three points, and you create your own luck. And it swings and roundabouts with things like this. Um, you know, you look at Cardiff away. We could have quite easily had a point there, obviously. Uh, the ref doesn't blow, it's 1-1. Wigan away, you know, questionable whether it was a foul on Morton to give away that goal, and then, you know, that could end 0-0. Um, so, I feel like, you know, we've deserved a bit of luck today. You can question, obviously, whether we had a, a, quite a bit of luck in the Sunderland game, to be fair. Was it a foul before the Diaz goal? Was Morton offside? Um so it's been it's been a lucky few games to be fair, but we're we're picking up form at the exact right time where we've got games coming up which are must wins really. Uh, you know you're looking at Hull away, Coventry away, Huddersfield at home, 
you know, you look at those three games and you're thinking you've got to take at least six, seven points out of those nine, you would hope. Um, you know, Coventry and Hull away aren't going to be easy ones, but you've got to win at least one. And then Huddersfield at home, we have to turn them over. Worst side in the league um, and an absolute shit show at the minute. So hopefully their manager's still in place by then. Um, but yeah, hopefully we can pick up form at the right time, get some wins under our belts and then take that form into the harder games, which obviously will be the likes of Burnley away and whatnot. But in terms of today, uh, you know, a brilliant assist from Morton for Gallagher, putting on a plate for him. Um, you know, the boy can pass a ball so well. Um, you know, probably just as good as Harvey Elliott was at passing a ball, to be honest with you, if not better. Um, just different class in that midfield and has really kind of shown Buckley how it's done, to be honest. And Buckley will not get a look in this season with Tyler Morton in that midfield. He, Tyler Morton could quite easily be playing in Liverpool's midfield next season with, you know, the way their midfield is at the minute with that a lot of ageing players, the likes of Milner, Henderson, Fabinho, Thiago, uh, you know, Cater, they're all quite old players. Um, so the, there's absolutely no reason why some of them could not get moved on. And Morton has a sporadic role next year for Liverpool with the way he's playing right now. Um, you know, obviously the championship's such a physical league and you know, he isn't a very physical player, to be honest, but he's still coping so well under pressure. The quick one-two passing, the, the vision to, to, you know, put that ball on a plate for Gallagher. Also, just to constantly finding players in behind, it's brilliant. Um, and then a second goal for Adam Wharton, um, thoroughly deserved. And I'm so glad he's off the mark with his first goal for the club he loves, the club he supports. And a, a really tidy finish as well um, into the bottom corner. Um, but yeah, I think we need to get out this habit um, of going 2-0 up and then sitting in for, you know, what seems 30, 40 minutes. Um, we did it against Sunderland and to be fair, it worked and you could obviously say today it's worked, but it's only worked today due to Thomas Kaminsky being in between the sticks. Um, you know, I mean, Sunderland was a different proposition, really. Uh, they didn't have any strikers on the pitch. They're all injured. Whereas today, you know, Lee, um, I nearly said Leeds, Birmingham have brought on, you know, Jukovic, Dini, kept Hogan on the pitch and have really gone for the game. Took a centre-half off, went with a four at the back. And uh, it was just constant, weren't it, for, for a good, you know, 30, 40 minutes. They were just on us, on us, on us, and we just could not get out. You know, uh, at Sunderland, we had the out ball and we, we had a few counter-attacks which we really should have took one of those chances, but today we just had absolutely nothing. Um, and we were so lucky to, to, to win today. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously they bring Jukovic and Dini on and it's only going one way, and that is route one. And, uh, you know, Ash Phillips gets bullied for the goal, let's be honest. Um he does, and to be honest, I I can't put too much blame on him because I think most centre halves in this league would get bullied by Jukovic and Dini, but you know he, he isn't ready. I he, he just isn't. If that's Dom Hyam or Ayala up against him or Wharton, it that doesn't happen in my opinion. Um, so yeah, and I think they just targeted him to be honest, and uh, I I think he I think he needs. A season personally in League One, I think the Championship is just a step too far for him, and I just fear he's going to make a really bad mistake. Because if if he'd have been at fault, obviously for one of the goals today, a few fans would have been getting on his back. Obviously, he was at fault for that goal, but if it had ended in a draw or a win to Birmingham, you you don't want people getting on a young a young lad's back like him. But he, I think it's just clear to see personally, he's just not there right now. I think Carter's more than capable. Um, and obviously we've got IR that's come back at some point. Um, so Phillips shouldn't be featuring too much, but I think he just needs a season in League One and a you know a rough league just to kind of grow out a bit, build his strength. Because as big as he is, and he is big for someone who's only 17 at the end of the day, like he isn't physical enough. He is, as, as intimidating as he does look, he just he isn't there. He isn't got the strength levels of an IR or a Wharton, a Dom High, which, you know, you can't be expected to, but 
when you're playing in the championship, you need to have that in your game, else you're going to get exposed like you did today. Um, and that's no slight on him. But um, Hedges goes off injured, what could be a massive blow considering Britain is out and obviously Hedges is the other player who we've been fitting in at right wing back um, and we don't have another right a right wing back or right back player um, unless you're counting Joe Rankin Costello who you know I think JDT's even forgot about since that stop performance giving them a goal on a plate um, so I can't see him coming back into the side you know he was meant to go out on loan but something fell through last minute and JDT has said he will you know he won't be getting game time or will struggle for game time under under him to something that effect. Um, so I guess it's going to have to be Carter at right back for the next game. You know, Ayala was hit and miss for today, so bring Ayala back in, I would think. Uh, go with Carter, right wing back. And I think that's a solid enough back five uh, still. Um, you know, we've got a week, to be fair, till Hull. So hopefully it's nothing too major for Hedges or Britain could potentially be back by then, I'm not sure what the injury news is with him. Smodix was also out today and Dak still couldn't get a place on the bench, um, which is a point of contention, uh, not one I'm really fussed about at the minute, to be honest. I think, you know, no player is bigger than the team and the team is winning right now. So I don't think there's any reason for fans to still be complaining about Dak personally, not featuring. We know the player used to be, but you know, we're winning right now and if JDT doesn't think he's up to it right now, I trust him enough and I trust his judgment enough. Obviously, he's the one watching him and training every day. Um, But yeah, uh, I think we've got a 100% record with this 5-3-2 formation so far. Um, I'm, I'm led to believe anyway, so much better than the 5-2-3. We've actually got a presence in midfield. We're not losing the midfield battle. Yes, we're a bit light up top, but when you've got Hedges, Adam Wharton, Morton bombing on, helping the attack, and as well as Pickering, you know, at times, I think we've got enough there. And, you know, when you've got Diaz and Gallagher there, Gallagher looks like a, a totally different player, by the way. I have to talk about Gallagher after today's performance. Like I said, for me, at one point, it was between him and Thomas Kaminsky. Gallagher absolutely ran himself into the ground, did so much good stuff, and probably the most support he's had in a long time at Ewood, with fans constantly chanting his song. Um, but yeah, uh, brilliant from Gallagher. And he just looks like a different man down the middle, doesn't he? How much better does he look actually being played as a striker of and out on the wing, which was, you know, uh, JDT for some reason thought was a good idea, just like Mowbray did. Um, you know, one of my mates was saying he's not even a striker anymore. When... Two managers have looked at him and thought he needs to be out on the wing. You, you can't class him as a striker anymore, but obviously some common sense has prevailed. He's played down the middle and he's got himself a goal today and a goal against Middlesbrough. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's that's two in three games, which for Sam Gallagher is, you know, unheard of, to be honest. So... Let's, let's hope he keeps at it. Um, I mean, I'd, I'd, well, if you count the, the Lenny on own goal as well, I guess it's free in, uh, free in free, but I don't think that was given to Gallagher, I don't believe. Um, but yeah, I picked up my Hull, Hull away tickets today, a tenner, really good price. Um, so I'd urge anyone who, you know, is looking for a cheap away day, um, and a away day we should do well in, you would hope they are down there. We're in a good bit of form at the minute, we'll go there full of confidence. And hopefully in a way day we can come away with a win after last season going there and them turning us over. And it's probably one of the worst away days I've had really after the match getting so much shit um, off the whole fans. Um, being in a Rovers court probably wasn't the best idea that night. Um, but yeah, should, should be a good away day for, for everyone to enjoy. And then uh, I've got commentary away after that, which I shall be doing. And then back at home for Huddersfield. And like I said, let's hope for six seven points from these next three and we'll, we'll be in such a good position by that point um and yeah such a shame about tony Mowbray doing a tony Mowbray and throwing away a 2-0 lead um at home to burnley could have been the perfect day you know blackpool beating preston uh us obviously winning and then it looked like you know it were going to be perfect with sunderland being 2-0 up but oh well um but yeah on to Hull away, I guess. And cheers for watching, guys. Leave a like and comment what you thought.